gracious and loving God, Father of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Master God, here we are again, a few of your humble servants, coming before your throne of grace. First of all, I thank you for everything before we ask you for anything. You've been so good to us. You have allowed us to get up this morning, Father God, to close ourselves in our right mind, food on our table, and we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your court with praise. We just want to lift up the name of Jesus. We ask you to bless all the one who's under the sign of my voice. Bless the one who wants to be here, but for some unknown reason, they're unable to, to be here with us, Father God. Touch their mind, touch their heart. We pray, dear Master, for our pastor, Pastor Galen K. Wright. We ask you to continue, Father God, build him up where he's weak and he's torn down. We know this road gets tired. We get tired sometimes. But give us the strength to continue on in Jesus' name. And we be so careful to give you all the praise and give you all the glory because you're worthy to be praised. This is your servant prayer, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And the church said, amen. Luke chapter 19. It's one of the sermons I believe y'all heard just about all your life. We'll be talking about the conversion of Zacchaeus. Amen. And the topic is how often should I change my heart? This sermon deals with the realization that every believer needs to have a continuous change of heart to become all that God wants him or her to be. Luke chapter 19 verse 1 says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publican, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. How often should we change our heart? Or change our mind? For years, car manufacturers have been telling us how to change our oil after so many thousand miles. Some of them recommend every 3,000 miles, some every 5,000 miles, and if you have that synthetic oil, it was suggested you could go up to 25,000 miles. But the one thing coming to all of them is a recognition that at some point, a change is going to be needed. 
How often should I change my heart? How long do you think you should try to live before checking in with Jesus? To ask the Lord, is it time for me to have a heart change? When was the last time you did a heart change? By heart change, my brother and sister, I'm not talking about that little thing you feel beating inside your chest. The heart is actually part of your mind that decides what you're going to do about your behavior. When we say invite Jesus into your heart, we're not talking about putting a, a little man inside your heart. We're talking about not making decisions to do things without first asking, is that what Christ really want me to do? For instance, if somebody does you wrong in your heart, your first response is to want to get even. But if Christ is in your heart, he says, chill out and let me show you how to handle this. First, let go of the anger so that you can see straight. Now, let me handle it from here. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we're giving him permission to change our hearts to change our way of thinking and our way of acting and reacting. How many of you know that there's some part of your heart that we do not want to have change? Ever made up your mind you were not going to speak to somebody for a certain number of hours or days just to pay them back for what they did or did not do? That's a hard condition, my brothers and sisters, that we do not want to change. We all know that an alcoholic or a crackhead addict would not change until he or she has hit rock bottom and genuinely, genuinely wants to change. They have to admit that they're an alcoholic or they're a crack addict. Sometimes we are addicts and we don't know it. Just like the alcoholic uses alcohol as a mean of dealing with life. We can use jealousy, bitterness, envy, materialism, greed, unforgiveness, anger, lying, and a host of hidden sin to deal with life. But my brothers and sisters, do you realize that some of us do not want to let go of these addictions in our heart for Jesus Christ? When we think about a chained heart, we have to think in terms of the whole heart. What would you do if you went to, in, to get an oil chain in your car and the guy chained the oil in the filter, but was short on New York. So he tell you, I put in three quarts of New York before I ran out. I just put back some of the old dirty oil back in it to fill up completely. But you don't have to pay me for that. Are you going to say thank you? I really appreciate that. But my brothers and sisters, sometimes we are, we are praying to be drawn closer to God. And yet at the same time, we insist on leaving in some of that dirty oil in our hearts. What dirty oil did you bring to church this morning? Are you going to be brave enough to let go and admit to God that you need another change today? Or will you settle for less than what God has in mind for you. Will you walk out of here today protecting your dirty all? But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that God does not have a problem dealing with people who carry around dirty all in their lives. 
And as a matter of fact, the church is here to help those with dirty all. Matthew 9, verse 12 and 13 of the NIV Bible says, on hearing Jesus, on hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. If there is dead all in your heart, I want you to know that Jesus is looking for you. How would you feel about a slum landlord by the name of Zach? who had a roach and rat infested apartment building, but had high rent fees and, and late fees. He never fixed anything, and he lied through his teeth when he went to a housing court. Suppose I told you this morning, my brothers and sisters, he wanted to get right with God. So he gave every tenant a, a free can of roach spray. A free box of decom. And he cut the late fee by $35 to $25. How many of you would say, wow, that's great. He really had a change of heart. How many of you think that Zach was just kidding himself about getting closer to God? You see, we laugh at Zach's can of roach spray. But that's what we do when our change of heart consists of not cursing on Sundays at church. But look out at home or when we with our friends or our being sweet to some people but the devil to others. Jesus didn't die for us to be one day or one location followers. I want you to know that Somebody is looking for Zach. If you see Zach, I can imagine that Zach is no different from a guy in the Bible whose name was Zacchaeus. He too, he was wealthy, fat cat, who had all the finer things that money could buy. Like Zach, he made his money off of taking advantage of others. Zacchaeus worked for the Roman version of the IRS, which was a whole lot worse then than it is today. Let's read about him together in Luke. Jesus entered in Jericho and was passing through. A man there by the name of Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy. He wanted to see Jesus, who he was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree, fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that day. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him, Zacchaeus. Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and they began to mumble. He is going to be a guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, He said, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, don't miss this now, salvation has come to this house. Because this man too, he's the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was law? But you got to understand this about Zacchaeus. He was rich and he was hated by his own people. Zacchaeus, he was a Jew. In those days for a Jew to be a tax collector made him both a thief 
and a traitor. He was a thief because tax collecting was a job that went to the highest bidder. He could charge whatever fee he wanted to collect taxes. If your tax bill was $500, he could add on another 500 for collection fee. He's the father of the bankers and the credit lender who charge you $30 for a late fee when it cost them nothing to get the check a day later. If he demanded $1,000, that's what you paid. But if he wanted $1,500, just because then you paid it, just because you didn't want the Roman soldier knocking down your door, the more money he got from you, the easiest was for the Romans to keep you as a second class citizen. There was a whole lot of people who would have liked to have met Zacchaeus alone in a dark alley. But the Bible said not only was he a tax collector, but he was a chief. He was a chief tax collector. And he was very rich. This means he was good at taking all of your money. And there was nothing you could do about it. Because he got to make up all of the rules. Zacchaeus may have plenty of money, but he was not, don't miss this now, he was not a happy man. One day he heard about Jesus. <laughs> some, some from somewhere. Maybe he heard about the time when Jesus had accepted another tax collector by the name of Matthew and made him a disciple. Maybe he saw how Matthew's life had, had changed and that people loved and they cared about Matthew, the former tax collector. But Zacchaeus didn't quite know how to, to do. You go about approaching Jesus. He didn't know how to get on Jesus' appointment schedule. Jesus spent his time hanging around. A lot of people that were considered not that important so their social calendar were not going to crisscross or intersect. Zacchaeus, he did notice that the people who really wanted to see Jesus, they took the time to go find out where Jesus was. It was a well-known fact that Jesus traveled up and down the roads, going from village to village. Word had spread through the city that on the way into Jericho. Jesus had healed two blind men sitting by the roadside, one of whom was named Bartimaeus. You see, when the guy's kids heard this, he made his way to the road that goes on from Jericho to Jerusalem. He wanted to see this guy named Jesus for himself. Now he knew it was risky for him to go out in the crowd of the very people who would have liked to have beat the daylights out of him. But sometimes you come to a point, Pastor, in your life when you want to change so bad that you're willing to risk whatever it takes to make that change happen. Some of you here today you're afraid to reach out and take a risk. And as a result, you continue to be miserable. Life is passing you by. One day you'll realize that what you were afraid of losing was not worth the cost of keeping it. Zacchaeus couldn't take his usual escort of bodyguard with him. He quit trying to be somebody big. He put on some ordinary clothes and went out to be among the crowd. He had to give up his special status if he wanted a true change of heart. When he got to the road that Jesus was expected to pass by, the people were already lined up <laughs> several rows deep. Now this presented a problem with Zacchaeus. When he got where he wanted to be, 
he faced a problem. He was too short to see over the crowd. Jesus could pass by, and he would never knew it. A lot of time, my brothers and sisters, we think that if I make up my mind to serve God, things are going to just fall into place. No, 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 they, no, they will not. Satan is going to throw some roadblocks in your path to get you to turn around and come back to what you're used to doing. God is going to let him so that you can make up your mind which way you're going to go. Zacchaeus wanted something real for his life. Do you know what the name Zacchaeus means? It means the righteous one. That's like calling the local drug dealer the neighborhood best friend. Zacchaeus was looking for a change of heart. The only way he was going to get to Jesus was to find a way to rise above the crowd. Some of you could experience life on a totally different level if you're willing to rise above the crowd. Don't be content hanging around with people with no vision for their lives or their future. Zacchaeus did not let his limitation set aside his goal. He didn't say, well, I was born short. I guess God ought to do something special to get to me. He didn't wait for the people voluntarily to move to the side so that he could get ahead. He took some action on his part and started looking. Let me ask you a question. Are you even looking this morning? Are you looking for how you need to begin your hard chain? Are you still blaming somebody else for where you are and what you are? But let me tell you something. The most important person responsible for your future is you. You have the opportunity to really mess it up or make something great of yourself. Zacchaeus didn't look down. He looked up. And when he, he did, he saw a sycamore tree with a branch hanging over the road. What's hanging in your life that could really lift you up if you went up after? He forgot all about how dignified he was. And he ran to the tree. He started climbing that tree. You see, he had not always been a rich aristocrat. He had come out of the hood, just like a lot of us. A lot of people resent. They were still in the hood. Even though you may think, you may feel. You see, a week ago, our kids would have said, you didn't catch me dead before you, you didn't catch me dead before you catch me climbing some tree along that dirt and dusty road. You know, he wore nothing but suits. Rich men don't climb trees. We buy them and turn them into chairs and furniture to make a profit. But he climbed that tree. Some of us won't climb because we think it's going to be too much work. We miss it on God's opportunity in front of us because they look like work. Lazy people, whether it's physical or spiritual laziness, miss out on a lot that could have been. But that day, Zacchaeus climbed the tree, and he waited. He waited for Jesus to come along. Then it happened. He could see the disciple leading the throne. No doubt Peter, James, and John are probably leading the group out in front. Jesus is marching along, and the crowd is so excited. And then Jesus get right under the branch, and he stopped. <laughs> and he look up into that tree. Everybody's eyes look up unto the tree. Somebody yells out, it's that no good. Zacchaeus, and he doesn't have his bars with him today. Let's beat the daylight out of him and get some of our money back. Jesus spotted the sin of no good soul. 
Jesus, we can handle him from here. Just tell him to come down out of that tree. As a matter of fact, let's knock him out of this tree. Can you imagine how terrified Zacchaeus must have been? This change of heart was about to get even more risky. And when Jesus speaks and says, Zacchaeus, Harry down. I need to go to your house today. Do you see how eager God is to accept you even when everybody else thinks you're just as awful person? That's how it is with the Lord. This is Jesus. You need to know him. When you decide that something in your life needs changing, that a few things that need to be shifted within your heart, you discover, like Zacchaeus, that, that God already knows your name. He knows your need. He's ready to get rid of that dirty all that we talked about earlier. God doesn't even ask you to get it together first. He said, come on down. Even though you may think or you may feel that God has given up on you. I want you to know this morning that God will not give up on you. You need to hear loud and clear. He has not given up on you. Others might have given up on you. Family or friend may have given up on you. But God been all around your tree. Searching and waiting. Looking into the branches. Shaking the branch a time or two. Trying to get your attention. I think right here at the tree is where Zacchaeus began to think clearly about a change of heart. Right at the tree, when Jesus called him by name, he reached out his hand and invited himself for dinner. A change of heart begins for you when God knocked at the door of your heart. He waits there for you to invite him in, to enter into your life. In those days, for someone to come to someone else's house and to share a meal, that was an intimate experience. So this was Jesus' way of saying, I want to be close with you. I want a friendship with you. This was the voice of God saying to a man who felt, who fell out of it on a limb. Friend, let's go to lunch. This is how a hard chain would be for you too. God moves near to us in Jesus Christ with welcoming on. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God's come to you, and he's keep coming to you, and he keep extending his love to you until you come out of that tree and you bring him home. Have you seen that God might be doing that within you? Drawing you to ask Christ into your life, into your home, into your business, into your classroom into your relationship. Have you felt that gym tugging going on at the hard level? Have people around you perhaps even been trying to point the way? Zacchaeus was surprised that Jesus would make him his agenda. He was surprised that Jesus would initiate love. That might surprise you too. If it does, you're not alone. You see a lot of people have been surprised by the amazing love of God. That brings us right to one more point, and I'm going to take my seat. When you meet Jesus, there's going to be a change. First, recognize that not everybody's going to be happy about you getting your life right before God. Some will be jealous. Some will despise you. And some will try to keep reminding you of what a sinner you are. Second, recognize that a chain heart it results in some chain action. See, when Zacchaeus came down out of that tree, a chain took place in him. People say, look at him. Just look at him hugging on Jesus. The nerve of that creep. He treated so many people. I want to hurt him myself. Now, if Zacchaeus had said from now on, I'm living for God and I'm going to build a big church. 
and pastor it, how many of you would have said, wow, look what Jesus did for him? If Zacchaeus had to set up a tent and started holding a revival, would you be eager to show up? But Zacchaeus shocked everyone when he said, Lord, right now, I pledge to give you 50% of everything that I own to the poor. And anybody that I have cheated, I agree to pay back four times as much. His change of heart was accompanied by an immediate change of action with his life. He was ready to remove, Pastor, out of the dirty all out of his life. Not only was he Zacchaeus excited, Everybody who heard his word, they were excited too. But I want you to notice that sometimes when you get saved, don't miss this, but you have, before you have the opportunity to tell others about Jesus, you need to make some things right. Some of us need to go and offer some apologies to people that we have hurt. Some of us need to give back things others knew that we took. Some of us need to forgive somebody that others know we had a grudge against for a long time. Some of us need to pay back some money that we owe some people. For some of us, Jesus has stopped, looked up, and called us by name. We were hanging out of that tree. Jesus saying, come down. I want to go to your home today. We are too close to responding, but some reason we won't come out of that tree. It's not worth waiting for another day in order to get down. Because you don't know how much time that you got left. Because if Zacchaeus had waited for the next time Jesus came to Jericho, he never would have seen Jesus. You see, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and he will be crucified before the week is over. But my brothers and sisters, God is tugging at your heart to make a change today. But each time you, you don't say yes, it gets a little harder to feel that tug. Let's think clearly about a chain heart. Why carry around dirty all when we can be clean? Some people believe that God sent Jesus into the world only to make good people. But that's not true at all. Jesus himself, himself said in this part of the Bible, he said, I came to seek and to save those which are lost. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He came for those like you and those like me who have been far from God. Those like Zacchaeus who know that they're sinful but they long to see God anyway. If you're struggling with something in your life, anything, recognize that he got up to help you with your struggle. If you're hurting, remember he got up to ease your pain. If you're sick, remember he got up to heal your disease. By his stripes are you healed. And I claim it for you. And I claim it for me. If you worried about tomorrow, remember he got up for all our tomorrow. And they are at today for him. If you feeling really blessed this morning, just remember we're blessed because he got up. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. I thought about him last night. And I still think about him this morning. There's not a day that goes by that I do not think about him. You say, well, why, Brother me? Why do you spend so much time with him on your mind? Because he got up. The reason that we serve Christ is to believe that he rose from the dead. And he's alive forevermore. We believe that when he died on that cross, he died for my sin. He died for your sin. He died so that we would be able to live forever 
in the presence of God the Father. I think about Jesus because he had got up. I would not be standing before you this morning. You see, I know it for myself that he got up. I heard about it. And then he revealed himself to me. You see, I'm a believer. I can lose everything that I own and every person I care about. That, that will not stop me for being a believer. Why? Because he got up. Because he got up. Laid in that gate for three days. And on the third day, he got up with all power. Not some power. All power of heaven and earth in his hand. Your life is not your own. Because he got up. There's more to you than you know. Because he got up. Accept him this morning.